Hello, this is Mike Levin, and welcome to video one on UML Getting Started. And the goal of this particular uh, video is to choose a software package for UML programming. Now, of course, what is UML? And it's pretty much the industry standard uh, modeling language for visualizing, specifying, constructing, and documenting software packages. Below here, I have a little graphic that illustrates a number of UML diagrams that you'll be becoming very familiar with in this course. One of the questions you want to ask yourself is really where do you want to go with UML? You can document, diagram, generate code even. Diagramming in this context means creating, editing UML diagrams. And sometimes that's all people want to do. But other people want to get more advanced. They actually want to actually round trip engineer. And that means code generation and reverse engineering. And we'll get into that in this course. Now there are a number of packages out there and we're going to show you how to select one. But a great place to go is uh, to Wikipedia and search on UML language tools. Let's go and bring that site up real quick here. Here is the UML. Go ahead and uh, copy this into your browser or uh, search in Wikipedia. And in Wikipedia there's just a number of UML packages out here. And let me go ahead and say this is not a complete list. There are many many UML packages and many new UML packages being released. And basically you can get a UML package in any type of language that you're programming in. And so we're actually going to show you how to select uh, a UML package for programming. So once again, I want to emphasize this is not a complete list. There are packages constantly being created on the web. For example, you won't find UML 14AS on the uh, list, but you might want to take a look at that if you're a Flex or ActionScript 3 user. Here's some tips for choosing the right UML package. The first thing you want to do when choosing the right UML packages, analyze your environment and your platform. You want to make sure uh, that the UML package that you choose matches your IDE. So IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. And don't forget such things as HTML5, Eclipse, Visual Studio, Python, NetBeams. It depends on what your developers or what you want to develop in. Also you want to make sure that that package runs on a Windows, Mac, or Linux uh, if you're using one of those particular environments. The other thing you want to do is do some searching of your own. Uh, as I mentioned, the Wikipedia uh, list that I showed you earlier is not complete. We're going to go back and take a look at it. And we're going to choose a package from it. I'll show you how to do that. But do some uh, uh, searching on your own based upon your environment. Uh, try it before you buy it. Uh, UML packages can be very expensive or they can be inexpensive depending on what you want to do with them. And don't forget to try the free stuff and the 30-day trials. There are some non-commercial uh, packages out there as well, which we'll show you in a moment. You definitely want to talk to your gurus and get their perspective on uh, what UML package to use. But if you're not a techie person and you don't, and the people in your group are not techie people either, don't get too techie with the software because you'll never use it because it's too hard to use. So use the KISS principle. And basically it stands for keep it simple, stupid. And uh, don't make it overcomplicated for your particular needs. Uh, give it a test run. Make sure you get your developers or your users together, sit them down, let them play with the package before you buy, and get their input from them, and try a few packages, not just one. Make sure, of course, that it's UML2. There are some packages that really look good, but once you look at them, they're actually just still running UML 1.4. Look for your repository support for data sharing. Ask yourself questions like, is it scalable? How many users can model at one time? Is there an SVN repository that supports, uh, you know, uh, versioning? And can users collaborate? These are all really good questions you need to ask when you're selecting a UML package. You want to make sure that it's printable, especially for large diagrams. You, UML projects can get very complex. The diagrams can be very large. You want maybe, and you want to be able to print them all out. And make sure they're printing the diagrams that you need. You actually may decide for a particular project you need a certain type of diagram. And if your UML uh, software doesn't support that, you're going to go out and buy another one that does. So make sure you look at those uh, parameters before you start. Uh, you want to support both forward and reverse engineering source code, and we'll get into that and what that means in this course. Look for a good tutorial base, support base, and is it being updated. You're going to find software packages out there that look very good, but they're not being supported anymore. So once you buy into them, you won't be able to grow with them because that technology is no longer viable. You want to make sure, once again, that is your UML2, that it understands XMI, supports MDA, and has templates, you know, things you can start off with in your building. The importance of XMI is that it's kind of an XML backend language. It gives you the ability to output from one tool to another. So you don't want to be trapped in your UML tool. So if you've created something, you have an export, you want to be able to bring it into a totally different package. And XMI will enable you to do that. And in this course, we'll talk about what XMI means. You want to make sure that it's MDA. That means a model-driven architecture. And we'll get into what that means in this course as well. 
So I want to show you how to select a software package. And from this, you're going to see uh, that Software Ideas Modeler actually is a good uh, possibility to start modeling with. That's actually what we're going to use. It's a free, non-commercial use. And if you want to buy it, it's actually only $89. It's fairly inexpensive. But I want to show you how I came to this conclusion, why this is a good software package to use. So let's go back to our Wikipedia article. So we're back on our Wikipedia page, and I want to show you how by using those 10 principles that we listed earlier, how you can choose the right UML package. And let's go ahead and just look at some of the things that we definitely want to look for. So let me boil down some of the things we definitely need to look for. We want to make sure that the package we choose is UML2, it is MDA, it is XMI, it has templates. We want to look at the pricing and definitely want to make sure that it is supported. So let's go ahead and take a look at those real quick. So once again, this list may be a little bit overwhelming at first. We're going to show you how to boil it down using those principles we've talked about earlier. And once again, I want to remind you that this is not a complete list, so you want to do some searching on the web. But right here, uh, Wikipedia does a great job basically comparing features for us. And we want actually, we can see right up top, they want to say, is it UML2? Do you, are you MDA? Is it XMI? Do you have templates? So let's take a look and see what packages have those. And so we're going to scroll down here. And we'll just start typing a list. We can see that uh, Bolum is. And we can see that Magic Draw has all the uh, categories that we're looking for. And Object Tiering uh, doesn't seem to support templates, but let's go ahead and put that on the list. We can see that Power Designer and Software Ideas actually supports uh, the major four categories that we're looking for. And let's type in Software Ideas. And let's scroll down a little bit more and see if we see anything else that we need. And that does it for us. But now I actually want to work with a freeware package. So we're going to take a look at this list and see which ones are freeware. So let's scroll back up and take a look at our freeware category. And we can see that Bolum is freeware, so we're going to keep that on the list. Magic Draw is commercial, so we'll take that off the list. Object Tiering is commercial, we'll take that off the list. Power Designer is commercial, we'll take that off the list. And Software Designer uh, initially looks like it's commercial, but actually you see a freeware non-commercial use. We're actually going to keep that on a list. And so the two that we're looking at right now is Bolum and Software Modeler. Now, we want to actually now go to the web and look up Bolum, look up Software Modeler, and compare the two and see which one we want to use for this course. So let's go to Bolum. Just go right to uh, Google and search on it. And at first, Bolum actually looks pretty good, but one of the things that concerns me, it says that they're no longer supporting it, only bug fixes. So uh, one of the things I'm actually looking for actually is software that is being supported. By the way, Bolum is a great package. And I don't want to down it anyway, but the uh, software developer himself has put up a message saying I'm not going to support this anymore. And he's kind of got a heartbreak over what's been done with his software, which is, which is one issue with open source software. So let's take a look at Software Ideas Modeler. So when you bring up Software Ideas Modeler, there is a list of things that are supported. And it seems to have everything that we're looking for, even uh, source code generation, both uh, reverse engineering as well. And it has a very easy install. And the commercial price is only $89. So it seems like with this initial analysis that Software Ideas is the Mahler package that we're looking for in this course. So in the next video, we're going to show you how to install and get started with Software Ideas Mahler. Hey, thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively, and I'll see you next time.